All right, folks. This is probably just going to be a practice video because I like to say what I want to say in front of the camera once and at least go over it, but I don't feel like being inside because I like being outside. So it's going to be a bouncing video. I don't know if I'm actually going to use this one or if I'm just, I just want to practice it. But if, if I say everything I want to say, I'm not really too concerned with the quality of the the uh, visual, you know. Plus, I don't smoke inside because Jackie, I don't want to, you know, smoke in a studio apartment with my dog. But, um, all right, so after the video last night that I made, I thought a lot about, I don't know, just a lot about how I want to try to put this information together. And I think I don't want to break it up into sections. Like, I want to start off talking about, like, what led to the downtime, this extended period of downtime that I had in my life. And, you know, just how I felt. And kind of, I don't know, maybe somebody can relate to it. Maybe somebody, you know, I, I don't know. I just, like I said, it's just all this stuff I've just kind of, I've, I've had a lot of realizations this year that have just changed my life a lot. I mean, the person I was on New Year's who said this is going to be, be the best year of my life, I don't even know who that person was no more. I mean, I've changed a lot this year in my head, a lot, a lot. And... I don't know, it's like the exact series of circumstances that happen to happen the exact way that they did. Now, I don't say happen to happen like I think things just happen to happen because I don't believe in coincidence at all. Maybe luck, chance, coincidence, maybe that applies to some people's lives. If so, good luck. But I believe in fate, so there is no such thing as coincidence. I mean, when you say all things work together, I mean, that means all things. It means me walking around right now doing this is supposed to be happening right now. And it, whether or not I put this fucking video on the internet is, I mean, that however it goes, that's how it's meant to be. So, I, uh, I don't know, like, I, like, it was real quiet the first, I don't know, 17, 18 years of my life. Like, I mean, like, really quiet. I almost think that, like, God was, like, just making sure I saved up all my, my, all that extra talking over them, like, 18 years. So I, I, I wouldn't be all talked out by the time I get to my age now. But, uh, so anyways, that was like one period of my life. And I just, I don't know, it's weird because I spent a lot of time alone. And I, as weird as it is, in all the different phases of my life, like, I always spend time alone. I always spend a lot of time alone. I love fucking just hanging out by myself. I do. I always have. And it's just, I, I don't know, because I always think out loud. I think out loud all, all the time anyways. I mean, I'll be at work with my coworkers and they're like, what? what? Nothing. I'm just thinking. And, uh, so I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just, I just enjoy not having other fucking people around me because even though I, like, I want to help people as a whole, I just fucking hate human beings. I do. Like, honestly, like, I, I'm, there's times that I'm disgusted to even be a human being because the so-called best thing that's ever happened to, you know, the earth is about the worst thing that's ever happened to it. But I know, I, I believe it's by design, so I'm not really knocking it, I'm just saying. But people do some horrible things, man. They really do. Oh, I mean, throughout history, just, and think of how many just horrible things we'll never even know about that happened. I mean, I don't really want to know about them. The crazy shit that I've heard alone, I mean, you know, <laughs> you got two people at the, that were alive at the same time. Combined, we're, we're responsible for like, I don't know, 100 million plus people dead. But you see, see, believing in fate too, because if, you know, Revelations is right and this is going to come to an end one day, then things have to, they're going to have to get to that point. You know what I mean? Like, bad's going to have to take over, which I believe it has a long time ago, at least by 1954, but I have a whole... Another video on my own personal ideas of what's been going on this year and all the way back to at least the 40s. I mean, I have a very well put together idea. I spent 20 years putting together, and I think it's about the most reasonable sounding conspiracy theory that I've ever heard. I mean, it's just my own thing that I pieced together over the years. But anyways, that's another video. 
So anyways, once I hit 18, 19, like, I just, life literally just took off in its own direction. And it was weird because, like, I went through this major personality overhaul, but I, I didn't put any effort into it. I didn't actively try to change who I was. I knew who I wanted to become at that point in my life, like who I wanted to be, how I wanted to be, I wanted to just be myself. Because I spent, you know, first 18 years of my life trying to be like everybody else, trying to blend in, you know, liking stuff that other people like, wearing stuff other people wear, watching what other people watch. And it's like, it didn't take too long before I realized that that's just not me. I'm, I don't like the same things most people like. And I'm just different. I'm just something weird different about me. I don't know, but... I, like, I spent the first half of my life trying to hide that from people because I thought that's what you're supposed to do based on society and everything else, you know. You're supposed to be, like, whatever pop culture says is cool. Whether it's cool or not, it's fucking irrelevant. It's just what pop culture says. Everybody goes, oh, that's what's cool. Okay, well, we'll go with that now because it's that easy for many, many people in the world to, when something else in, you know, in the pop culture thing changes... That they just run with it. Because like, ooh, this is the new thing. All right. Because they want to be hip and in and new on all the new shit. But it's like, we've had enough history, modern history, that we've already, they've already had hip in pretty much every way of eligible. The actors and actresses of back in the day are just dramatically better than anything out there today. There are still some good actors and actresses, but... I don't care to see most of the movies that are made anymore. Most movies I watch and TV shows are black and white. And I don't know. It's just, but anyway, my point is, is that that's what I thought I was supposed to be. I thought I was supposed to be like everybody else and be happy with that. And then one day, towards the end of high school, it was like something occurred to me. Where I was like, dude, why the fuck am I trying to be like everybody else? I'm like, dude, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, man. I'm not any better, worse, smarter, dumber than anybody else, but I'm just not like other people. Like, some up here is just, the gears shift backwards or something. I don't know what it is, but there's just something that's fucking different. I don't know if it's just the way I look at things or what it is. I, I don't know, but I'm like, dude, why the fuck am I trying to hide that from people? So, from that point, over the next 20 years, I just flew out of my shell and then, I mean, there's a lot of progress at first in the first couple years. I mean, I don't know. Like, I went from, I couldn't even talk to a girl when I'm a junior in high school. Even, like, right before, I, maybe even I start my senior year. And a couple years later, I was seeing this girl who, up until not that long ago, was probably the most beautiful chick I'd ever seen, in my opinion. I, I, I just, she was, like, the standard from, like, 2002 or three till like last year <laughs> and I'm like how the fuck did I do that I don't know because I didn't make any active progress towards that I didn't go out and like try to make it happen it just fucking it was, like I said fate but I had dreamt of certain things happening my whole life and I shit you not every single thing every single thing I've ever had ever thought about and pictured in my head I don't even think I ever asked for it I don't think I just would just sit and think about it and I kid you not, those things happen exactly like I thought they were. And they're always much better than I ever thought that, that it would be. And, sorry, I was watching for cars coming up the street. It's fucking easy. It's kind of flying down this road. All right, pause time. All right, that was a false alarm. But anyways, everything I'd ever imagined, everything I'd ever thought about and, you know, wanted to happen one day. And I'll be honest, like, I said, I've talked to God my whole life, but I don't recall ever even asking for those things to happen. It was like, a, man, wouldn't that be really nice, you know? And every time, everything, everything happened exactly like I knew it was going to. And it was just way better than I, than I thought it would be at the time or before it happened, you know? It just always works out so much better. And it's like, so my life took me into my 20s. I had a fucking blast in my 20s. I mean, it just, just partied my ass off all the way through my 20s. But the weird thing is, is I, I did it because that's what I felt like I was supposed to be doing. And I know that sounds ridiculous to people, and people say, well, I don't think God wants you hanging out at bars. Well, if he's trying to help you work on your social skills, 
that's one of the better places to work on it. And that way, when I like when I first started off, like going to bars, like I, I wasn't as open early on as I was, you know, as the years went by. Like first, it take me a few drinks, and then I start dancing and music. Like go to Blues Fest, and I'd be dancing. But like now, it's like I'm just me. I don't, I don't need any booze, nothing. I just be me. It don't matter. I, don't, I just, I don't care. I'm only one of like ten people every year in Chicago at Blues Fest, just dancing a whole week. I'll be dancing from one stage to the next to some stage off in the distance I can hear playing. And I just, I beat my head to be no music, and I'm just like dancing along. <laughs> it's fun, man. Because everybody watches, because everybody's looking at me going, man, I wish I could just do that. And I'm like, you can. All you got to do is just start moving your fucking ass. Don't matter if you know how to dance or if you know how to move to the beat. Just fucking do it. Nobody cares. You could think you look like a fool. And other people are like, man, I wish I was doing that too. But, uh, so anyways, I go through my 20s. I mean, how much time? I got? Oh, I got plenty of time. So I go into my 20s. Had a blast all the way through. Towards the end of my 20s. I started a serious relationship. I've only had two. I had just turned 39. I've had two serious relationships because I'm not a fucking fan of relationships. I mean, temporary ones are fantastic. But, I mean, I just got no point at this point anymore that, like, I don't know, that four years ago when I when I just, just, just let go of life and stopped trying to force life, I just stopped dating. And for a while, I was just taking a break, and then I was just like, you know what, man, unless I meet... Unless I meet the girl that I, I that I could just immediately, the first time I see this person, I see this girl and I know that I, without a doubt that that's the girl I'm meant to be with forever. If, I, if that does not happen anymore, I, I have no interest anymore at all. I mean, I just got way too much stuff that I want to get done, way too many things going on. I have a pretty busy life with my daily routine and everything I get done. And it's like, I just don't really have time for something that ain't going to last. Now, I mean, if I met, I mean, I don't know, if I met a girl that I was just, blown away by and just wanted something temporary like alright you know it's not that I wouldn't but it's gonna take it's gonna take an awful lot even for that cause I just I don't know I think one of the greatest things I discovered about myself is that I don't need a girl in my life years I mean years and years I was I was convinced I had to have somebody in my life now I'm not I don't I was never the type to go from right from one to the next though it was just like, I would, I would wait until I would actually meet somebody that I was attracted to, was attracted to me, that I liked, that was, you know, my type of person, that was into the same things as I was, and then, you know, but it's like, I always thought, like, I don't know, I just thought I had to have some, at least some girl around, you know, and like, once I realized it didn't, pff, dude, that changed my whole life forever. I've never looked back. I mean, not that it's not nice, but it's like, dude, I, I just, like, I don't know, I got bigger fish to fry at this point in life. And I've already had enough fun. And I don't know. It's just, just, I don't know. It's weird because one, I'm telling you, man, once I realized that I didn't need it, I, if I would have realized this shit t- like 20 years ago, I probably would have changed the world by now a couple times. But it wasn't meant to go that way. But I'm just saying. But anyhow, so I, I started this year's relationship. My second one um, went great. I mean, honestly, it was like almost exactly three years long. It was like three years and a month. And it was, I mean, it was weird because it was, I mean, we had a great time. We were like best friends the whole time. And we just, we had a really good relationship, like a really fun relationship. But we had agreed in the beginning that if we ever felt it was time to part, that we would just do so instead of trying to push until we both hate each other because we had done it both of us had done that before with uh you know an ex of each of ours so finally the time came now this feeling i've had in my gut ever since in my earliest memories all the way through my whole life this feeling towards like the once i once we hit like two years in and it started that third year i know i started to notice it like that feeling it wasn't there anymore that was the first time in my whole life that feeling ever went away it has never, ever, 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 ever went away, and it was gone. Now, I knew what my gut was telling me. I didn't want it to tell me that because I didn't, I mean, I, I didn't want to have to let go of something that, you know, I mean, I really love this girl. And the problem is I just knew that it was time, and one day we just brought it up, and she agreed, and we went our separate ways, and 
I don't know, it, it didn't get to me at first, but then, I don't know, after about a month or so, I just, like, I don't know, I kind of just felt like I, I re regretted doing so. But at that point, you know, I already had moved out. Things, that was it, you know. And she was just said, she's going to move on with life. I said, okay. So after about four or five months, I, we ended up running into each other. We hung out a couple times. And then after that, I just realized it wasn't going to be. So I let that go pretty early on. I mean, it was like maybe five, six, four, five, six months in. And it's not that I didn't, like, you know, miss her from time to time. But it was like. That wasn't the main reason I was down. Now, the weird thing is, is I just had this realization about the, that six-year period of my life. I, I'm astounded it took me four years to be four years removed from that time to realize why the fuck I was so miserable that whole time. But I'll get to that. So, I started this, like, downward spiral after that. Like, I mean, I just felt like, you know, like my fucking gut was twisted in a fucking knot. And I just was like, I just, I, I didn't eat. I lost 25 pounds in like a week and a half because I just stopped. I mean, I don't fucking eat very much anyways, I ain't gonna lie. I barely eat food. So I don't think I've had hardly anything all day today. And it's already 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock. But anyways, I just, like, I just started, you know, the thing is like, I do when I left. I knew that it wasn't. I, I, it's like a new bad times we were going to set in. I knew that. I was aware of that before it happened. But I knew that it had to happen. I ain't got another car coming. Hold on. All right, there's another false alarm. So, I knew that bad times were setting in, but I knew it was what I had to do, whether I wanted to or not. And at this point in my life, I had never... I mean, when I first met her, my gut told me to go with her because there was another girl that I knew that I liked that liked me but my gut just told me to go with this one so I did and I don't know I, was, I thought a lot about that decision I thought a lot about that for for quite a few years actually up until the thing is like I didn't finally hit the point where I have absolutely no regrets whatsoever until this year like earlier this year and when I got to that point, like, up until, so we're talking like 38 and a half years of my life, roughly, I've had a list of regrets about 10 miles long. And it seems, it seems though, that one of my favorite pastimes, pastimes is to just sit and fucking harp on that shit over and over and over and just go, man, what if I would have done this? What if I had done that? And the thing is, believing in fate, I've always known that everything happens for a reason. I have absolutely no doubt about that. But the problem was, up until this year, I couldn't string them all together. I see all these these moments in my life, all these separate individual moments that I knew were fucking important. Some things that see, were like from the outside were seemingly meaningless, but they they had big impacts or meaning. Other moments, you know, that I knew were big. All kind of things happened. It's like I just couldn't piece them all together. That was my problem. And during that six years, see when that feeling was gone. That was the reason I left to begin with. I mean, that was my main reason for it. So, you know, six months goes by, year goes by, two years goes by, nothing. Like, that feeling is, it, it, it's, it feels like it's dead. Now, here's the thing. And never at any point, not at any point ever, 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 ever for any reason that I ever actually doubt that, it was, that that shit was going to end. And that, I mean, I knew that for something like that, especially the more years that went by in this really down time. And the thing is, like, I don't even want to, I, I, I won't even, don't want to say I'm depressed because there's a lot of people out there in the world who have a legitimate shit to be depressed about. And I fucking certainly had nothing to be depressed about. I got arrested and, and, and ended up losing my job. And that was about the only bad thing that actually happened. But to be honest with you, it was like, I couldn't see why all these years were happening. All these bad years seemed to be happening. Like, everything that could fucking go wrong would constantly. And I'm over here thinking that, like, I'll find... You know, I, for years, I thought that I was looking for happiness in someone. But what I was really looking for was that feeling of fate in somebody else. And that's the problem. I, it took me six years to realize that's not going to fucking happen. And if I did find that in somebody, that's not really the route that I want to go. I want to find that feeling and then find somebody if I'm going to be with someone for, you know, the rest of my fucking life. I don't want 
I want to be happy on my own. I want to be regret free and worry free on my own and find that feeling of fate on my own before I'd ever even consider being with somebody. So I just, during this time, I just kept trying and trying. It's just like, it just, I don't know. It's like most times things just wouldn't work out. And I, I, I kind of re- thought even at the time, but it, I just didn't want to think about it then. But looking back, like I think I subconsciously was picking girls that I knew it wasn't really going to work with for more than a couple months because they just got out of relationships or whatever. And like the couple of times that I had met a girl I really liked that liked me too and that we actually started dating, I fucking ran. <laughs> like, no reason. I don't know, didn't know why. There was one in particular I looked back at for years. I'm like, what the fuck did I do that for? And I mean, during that six years, there was about five or six different girls that over that time period that I knew they really liked me. I knew they liked me. I knew they did. I, I liked them a lot. I was very much attracted to them. And, I mean, a couple of them pretty much just ba- basically told me to ask them out, and I just never did. And, I'm like, dude, let me tell you how many times I kicked myself in the ass for all of them. All the fucking time. And it's like, I don't know, I couldn't explain why. It was just like, no matter how much I wanted to just say something, or I just could not fucking do it. I couldn't do it, I, and I don't. I couldn't explain it at the time. Like, no matter. It was like the harder I tried, the less. Like, I, I just. That was it. Literally, just walked away from girls and moments and things that just. For years, man, I was like, what? So you start compiling these up over that six years, and after the fact that, like I said, I figured it'd be a year or two, but you're getting like, three years in, and four years in. By this point, I'm out of my fucking mind. I'm questioning everything I've ever done. I'm over here wondering why the fuck. Did I leave this girl because that fa- that feeling was gone? And four years later, it wasn't back. Do you know how many times I sat there just fucking just with knots in my stomach, just going, what the fuck did I do? Really doubting myself. Really doubting myself. And the thing is, I mean, every night, man, I mean, especially, like, in the first, like, year to two years, like... I had some really fucking down times, man. I mean, so many times that I just wished. I mean, like, just about every night when I went to bed, I'm like, dude, I just, it would be so nice not to wake up tomorrow to just fucking never wake up again. Every fucking night. I mean, I would never actually take my own fucking life because I just, yeah, like I said, it wasn't that bad. It's just it. But it's like, like I said, it's like, it wasn't the fact that things were working out with girls because I'm telling you, it was like, I literally was like, like, I meet a girl, oh, you're just a few months out of a relationship, all right, let's hang out, you know, but, I don't know, it's like, that wasn't it, I mean, per- looking back now, I'm not fucking glad none of that shit happened, I'm fucking glad, I can't even tell you how glad, and nothing against any one of them girls, neither, not a fucking thing against them, you know, there's always a little part of me that kind of wonders what would have happened on, on a few occasions, if I'd done something differently, but you know what? 2020 has been my fucking year. I mean, this has been my year. And I sorry, I, I cuss a lot. That's how I talk. I've been talking like this since I was in like fucking four years old. Motherfucking, I mean, literally, no joke. Motherfucking everything. Fucking, I just, I mean, <laughs> I mean, all of us in first grade were just fucking motherfucking people, you know. So, sorry, this is how I am. But, so, the thing is, I didn't realize though. I mean, I knew I, that I would sit there and go, man, I, I, I walked away from a relationship because of a feeling that was gone. And years later, it hasn't come back. I would think about that a lot. But it never occurred to me until, I shit you not, like this week, last week. I think it was this weekend. Where I was like, oh, that's why I was fucking miserable for six years. Because I couldn't find that fucking feeling. And I mean, I was trying. I was trying to force finding the girl that I'm meant to be with her because... Like, I, don't, I can't speak for nobody but myself, but I truly believe that, that that if there's somebody out there I'm meant to be with, that it's only one person. Now, some people might, you know, maybe there's a handful of girls in the whole world that maybe, you know, maybe they could they, they make it make it with and they would be happy with and they can make a happy life with. But believing in fate, that means there's only one person, which is why marriage is, I mean, I'm almost 40. I ain't even put a ring on a girl's finger yet. Thank God. But... If it ever does happen, it'll only happen one time. That's it. If for some reason it didn't work, I'm not, I will not buy a second ring. Not even for the same person. But 
I don't know. So, but yeah, that's why I was miserable because I kept looking, looking like, I mean, once I got to year five, like, dude, I'm just like walking around like a fuck. I mean, I had been by three, four years in, but like, I was just dead behind my eyes, you know? Like, my, my brain, I was just like, what? I'm walking around like a fucking miserable zombie. And the shit is, is like, it was all in my head. All of it was in my head. Other than getting arrested and getting fired. Which, ironically, those worked out fucking wonderfully. Because out of all the things that happened, the seemingly worst thing that happened, right in the middle of them six years, that was the one thing that, that didn't worry me or, or, or concern me. Because I was like... Like, I kid you not, as I, I mean, I was pissed because my gut told me we were out of celebrating a buddy's bachelor party. I we went to another bar after we got back. We had a ride out to Chicago and back. And then we went out to a bar nearby. And then I just had this fucking feeling in my gut. I can't, I'm just pulling me to one specific bar about 10 miles away. And I mean, at this point, hell, I only had like one, one beer in a few hours, but. I think I had maybe two before I left there total. So we go out. I finally, it took me like 45 minutes to talk to somebody and it going because I don't want to go by myself. So we go out there. We walk in. This place is jam fucking packed. We look, we take one look around and go, fuck death. And then this girl I knew at the time called me. She's like, hey, come, you know, pick me up from work. All right, it's cool. So get in the car, pull out on the main road. Did not see the state trooper coming over the hill. Now, I'm going to tell you what, I could pick out a police car's headlights, or if it's not a police car, it is at least the same type of car or vehicle that they either currently drive or have ever fucking driven that I've ever seen them. I could pick out like a, a, a 90s Caprice headlights, and you don't see those on police cars very often. So, I don't know how in the world I didn't see that car. I I mean, it was, it was a Charger. I mean, a dude, a fucking Charger headlights, that was like one of the... It was one they did on the second style, I believe. That was one they were. And I was like, I don't know how I, I just, I don't know how I didn't see it. I must have been thinking about going picking this girl up and like, even sitting in the squad car with my hands cuffed behind me, I just had the most peaceful feeling in my gut. Now my dumb ass is thinking, before I heard from this other girl, I'm thinking like, all right, maybe my gut's telling me to go out there and meet some girl, you know? Because that's what I, for some reason, was like fixated on thinking that's what was going to find that happiness and that feeling of fate. So, that's what I think. Once I'm sitting there in the police car handcuffed, I mean, I knew I fucked my life up. I knew I was just fucked. I got a DUI and just fuck shit up. But, even sitting there in a squad car, I kid you not, like, I was like, dude, I just had this overwhelming feeling of peace in my gut. Like my gut, that, that's what my gut led me to. Wait, well, no girl, it was, it was a, a DUI. Now again, people would say, well, why would God lead you to a DUI? Well, because if you knew the effects that that had on my life, you'd understand. So anyways, losing my job. Mm. I'm getting short on time. I ain't got time for another uh, volume tonight, so I'll get this quick, but lose my job. So I went with a buddy of mine, that was 2014. That's when we started talking about speaking things into existence again, which really started to play a factor in my life from that point on, especially starting about two years later. So, but this whole this whole six years, man, like, I finally ended up getting my job back a year later, and things have actually been great. I've, I've been back at this job for like six years now. I can't believe it. It feels like just yesterday they were letting me go, and I've been back for six years. It was gone for a little over a year, about 14 months. And I tell you what, this is exactly where I was supposed to be for the time being. It's the place that I, that I was supposed to be. I hold it. I'm gonna pause. Like my last cigarette. And I already got four minutes exactly. So I lose my job and the back there. I've been back for years, and honestly, I know it's where I'm supposed to be. It's where I have been supposed to have been at since 2011, except for that 14 months I didn't work there, because that also during that time I worked with my buddy for a county. Uh, branch of the county and I also had a second job at a pizza place and that place is just, just I, I can't even go into it right now but it's just forever changed my life it's just it's just everything that's happened has changed my life now I've been back at my job for years I, I know in my gut my gut's been telling me lately that I really do believe in the next two two I, I want to say three years almost as a default but I really feel like it's going to be closer to two years than it will be three years but that like I'm I'm gonna be have moved on from that place and that I'm gonna be already like well into 
whatever my fate is and however it's going to work out. Once I, once I get a steady source of money coming in so I don't have to go work anymore, then I can really end like getting a decent amount of money. I have all kind of plans on how I want to try to help people and try to change the world. And like, I mean, I should just start writing fucking books at some point because I shit you not, I could type and talk for fucking 10 days straight on several subjects. You want to talk about music? Don't even start, dude. You better have about three weeks doing nothing to do because I, I won't stop. But I don't know. So I'm, I want to work on making these videos and I just wanted to make a second part to it and just say like, look, all that horse shit and bullshit and misery, I'm going to tell you those six years were so wonderfully and divinely, perfectly timed and placed in my life like you can't imagine. Because that six years of fucking bullshit and misery was one of the best things that's ever happened to me because that's what finally got me to let go. And the thing is, with fate, like people want to say, well, you know, if you would have done it years ago, well, that it wasn't meant to happen years ago. I wasn't supposed to know any of this any sooner than I was because it would throw everything off. So, now, it might just mean that if I learned it sooner that it would not time me up with the right circumstances and the right people and the right connections along the way to whereas if it happens now, now all that timing's lined up. I got a whole theory on timing. I literally just timing your day, but I'll get on that later. But all of this fucking bullshit was fucking I mean not only was it so wonderful I go back and do it again not even knowing if just take away everything I've learned and put me back through it like right now I'd be like yeah fuck it I'd gladly go back and do it. like six years is all I had to fucking deal that's all I had to pay to feel as happy as I fucking feel inside I thought I do I should have at least had to pay like 12 years of misery just to fucking feel as good as I do so just know that if you're going through some bullshit and some hard time I mean it don't matter how fucking hard it is as long as you keep, like I've, I've heard a few people say, as long as God keeps waking you up, he ain't done with you. And I know he ain't done with me. And I, it's like I've never worried about serious injury or death or illness ever. That's why I smoke three packs of cigarettes a day because I'm kind of taking advantage of that a little bit because I know until I fulfill my purpose in this world, I cannot die. That's why I go skydiving once a year. Just my way of showing God, like, hey, here's how much I trust. I'm going to jump out of a fucking airplane. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, it's pretty safe anyways, but I'm just saying. It, it's still, you know, make you just do a little Hail Mary or something. I ain't even Catholic, you know, but just, you know, something. Anyways, I'm about to run out of time. But just know that if you, no matter how bad a shit you're going through right now, there is a day coming where you will be better and it will be perfect. And if you keep pushing and keep working towards whatever it is you have in, in you that you know you're supposed to do in this world, it'll bring you untold happiness that you cannot pay money to have. You cannot pay no drug, no amount of money, no chemical, nothing can make you feel that feeling that I feel inside, I promise you, because I've tried a lot of them, and it don't come close. So hang in there. I'll make some more videos soon, y'all. Later.